All right, Blanks, obviously you guys come out firing in that first period against the Anaheim Ducks, but then things go the other way in those other two periods. Are there things from that game that you want to correct tonight against San Jose? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had a good start last game, so got to continue that tonight. And, um, I mean, just play a consistent full 60 and um, kind of manage the momentum changes and the highs and lows of a game. You talked about the highs and lows and the momentum right there, and we just heard from your head coach, Brad Larson. He kind of talked about that in the sense of this season, the ups and downs of this season and learning. And, you know, you've been through so much in your career, you know, an, an underdog, earning the scholarship at Michigan, you know, earning the contract with the Blue Jackets and obviously the injury this year. Have you kind of embraced that this season, the ups and downs and the learning and growing with this team? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me is just trying to focus on what I can control and um, can't control, uh, obviously, an injury or, or anything like that. Or, um, But just trying to go out each and every single night and, and really just enjoy it. It's, um, like Lars said this morning in, in our meeting, it's a privilege to be able to go out there and play. And um, Saturday night, I think, packed house. So it should be, should be a fun one. So um, I'm really excited and uh, just trying to enjoy each and every single day. Yeah, what does that mean to you, the fact that you guys have had your struggles this season, but the Blue Jackets fans do continue to come out and pack Nationwide Arena? Yeah, I mean, I said it last year. It was um, obviously first time for me in, in Columbus. And um, at that point when I came, the team was out of a playoff spot. And the, the atmosphere on a Sunday night at 1 o'clock was, was electric. So um, a lot of credit to the fifth line and, and the fans of, uh, of the team. And um, you can tell this is, a, this is a hard building to play in, and, and it's a great hockey town. So I'm definitely thankful for them. You talked about it coming back from your injury, maybe managing things a little bit better or picking your spots a little bit better. But is that possible with a player like you that goes 100 miles an hour all the time? Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think I'm trying to kind of figure that out as, as game as games go on. I kind of knew that it wouldn't be something that I would be able to do right away. But it's kind of something that um, as I get to play more games and as I get to understand kind of um, the difference between the college and the pro level and trying to manage that. So um, I don't know if people will see it, but I've, I've kind of noticed it a little bit in the last couple of games, just trying to pick my spots and understand uh, when to go, when not to go, when to, when to make a play. And it's ultimately just managing a game and, and managing how I'm feeling and, and how the team's playing. Did we see a perfect example of that the other night against the Ducks when he dumped the player into the bench and turned around and scored the other way? <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. I mean, it's crazy. Like looking back at that shift, like uh, you never know what's going to happen on a shift. So um, again, just trying to enjoy and, and make the most out of each and every single opportunity, each and every single shift. I don't know if you've looked up to Eric Carlson at all throughout your NHL career, but he's a right shot defenseman that can skate, obviously put the puck in the back of the net. Got to be pretty special to face off against a veteran like this tonight, especially the season that he's having. Yeah, um, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, anytime we get to play a high caliber defenseman or um, a high caliber player like that, it's pretty cool for me, whether if that's uh, playing Roman Yossi against Nashville or um, Eric Carlson tonight. So. Um, I definitely uh, watch them a little bit more when they're out on the ice and, and try and learn things and, and try and see how they handle themselves. So it's definitely uh, definitely pretty cool. All right, thanks very much for this, Blanks, and good luck tonight. Yep, thank you. Lineup's the same. Corpy's in. I'll take your first question right out of your mouth. There you go. Are we good? That's a big back here. Stay out of that one. Sharks are kind of in the same boat and just trying to develop and trying to get some consistency. Mm -hmm. How do you coach consistency? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And it, there's many challenges with that word consistency. I, I, you know, for us, health has been a major issue. Uh, we know that. Uh, you develop chemistry and consistency with the same guys in the lineup night in, night out. We all understand there's going to be injuries within a season. I think we've it's been excessive for us and, and longevity with some of these. You know, you you lose a Wierenski, it's been 30 plus games. You lose Jake Forchek, it's 30 plus games. You lose Jake Bean, it's been the whole season. It's been Dan Forth the whole season. You know, we didn't get a guy like Texier back, who was a big part of us last year. You know, he was a big part. Um, and then you lose Boone for a month. You lose Blankenberg for two months. So. It's, it's not excuses, it's, it's just our reality, it's, it's a fact. So you lose NHL players and, you know, and we're a young team anyways, and now you're plugging young guys in in positions that, you know, you, you hope they thrive, but it's, it's challenging because you're playing other hockey teams that maybe aren't going through the same things as you are. So you try to surround them, you wanna insulate them, you wanna put them in the best position to succeed. 
and sometimes it, it's tough. They're learning positions they haven't played. Sometimes it's the grind of a season, like we're, we're halfway through. And a lot of our young guys have played 35, 36 games, whether it's college. So really the NHL is starting for them now. So when you talk about consistency and what that has to look like, uh, I think health helps in getting guys slotted where they should be, uh, surrounded by the people they should be surrounded by. That helps a lot. But in saying that, you, you deal with your circumstance and you try and help these guys and you try and build it through practice, uh, through our competitiveness in there. And, and, and you, you try to get more like this instead of the highs and lows, right? And we've had too many peaks and valleys where good two periods, one bad period, one good period, two bad periods, one good game, one bad game. And, and that's what we got to bridge. And, and you know, it, if, you know, it is the million dollar question, how do we bridge it? I think it takes time, it takes health, it takes, we got guys that have come back under two team practices, you know, cause they're healthy. So they're, they're trying to get up to speed after being out one and two months at a time. So that's, that's what it is and it's okay. And, and we're just going to keep fighting through it. Brad, it's another kind of intangible here, but how do you measure your team's resiliency through all the ups and downs? Uh, another tough loss the other night and, and yep. they got to bounce back and play yeah. tonight. Yeah. You know what? It, my, my wife shares, she, she, and, and you know, I, She's not really a hockey person, but she's got a lot of wisdom. And sometimes I don't want to hear it, but she's right. She's like, oftentimes the uh, growth isn't linear, right? It's not this nice trajectory that's a straight line. And, and life is going to be a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and peaks and valleys. So, you know, when you're in those valleys, it's, it's, it's hard. Nobody says that's easy. It's a grind. And, but, you know, the, the opportunities to grow – sometimes are in your wins and sometimes it's not in your production. Sometimes it's not in the, the easy success. It's going to be, how do we grow as a group dealing with adversity? How do we deal with, are we consistent in our practice habits? How are we going to go through, you know, one good period, two bad ones? And are we, are we encouraging and pushing each other the right way? Is accountability okay now? And, you know, especially when it's you, you know, it's easy. Everybody loves accountability when it's someone else. It's when it's you, it's like, yeah, it's so like I've been held accountable a few times. It's like I don't want to hear it, but it came from a place of love from people that I respect, and I'm like, that's that's a great point. So I've been learning lessons along the way too. So that might be the growth for us, you know, and where we're at. We want the wins. We we want the result because that's what's fun. That's why we do this, uh, and hopefully we get more of those. But how it's gauged might look a little different than you know in a year where you're loaded and you, and it's like cup or bust type mentality right so we have to grow we know that the growth might come in different ways this year for us but you know as adults that's easier to accept than as a you know i disagree i'm 45 and i'm learning these lessons yeah. like everybody else right. and so uh you know we're we're doing some some things as a family and i've talked with my 10 year old and i'm like dad's learning that too and he's 10 so, so these are the things that we're always learning, right? They say, if you're not growing, you're falling behind. So yes, as, as a young man coming in the league and you're wide-eyed and you're excited and, and energized about the NHL, it doesn't go as planned. So what do you do, right? As 45-year-old coach and been around pro hockey 26 years, it hasn't gone as planned. So what do you do? How do you handle it? And so we're, and everybody in between, we're all trying to grow. And, and the growth is different for different people, but you can do it together and and that growth is different for each guy if you handle it properly it can really serve you well down the road it really can and it's i know it sounds cliche and it's all the rhetoric and everyone's like oh yeah yeah but that's the truth you know people say things a lot because a lot of it there's a lot of truth to it and so these moments as hard as they are and difficult can be very fulfilling and rewarding if you handle it the right way and, and that's what we have to embrace is, is going, okay, we got to dig a little deeper here and, and do this through as a group because nobody's on an island. It's, it's not one guy. It's not one person. It's, everybody cares a lot, and we got to find ways to grow in those areas. You look at you know the past couple of teams that have won the Stanley Cup, even going back all the way to Washington, and there have been times, different circumstances where they have either disappointed or have been going through some, you know, a lot of losing. You look at Colorado, they had 48 points. Not, Six years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like how 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 beneficial? Obviously, it's not fun to lose, like you said, but eventually this team is going to be better. And and mm -hmm. in, in those moments, how beneficial are the moments where you learn how to how to deal with losing yep. so then when you're ready to win, it's not the worst thing in the world if you do lose a game. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I have to live in the moment, right? 
if I could fast forward and be Jared Bender and go, yeah, he looks back at that 48 point season because I've talked to him. You know, we coached together. He was my assistant coach with with uh, uh, Nolan Pratt in Springfield, and we were his great staff. And so he went through his first year. I'm like, how you doing? You know, it's like it's a grind. Like it's it's misery, right? And because you care, you want to win. We know why we're doing it. I talked to him after he won the Stanley Cup. A little bit of a different feeling, right? So. But he, he looks back on that season. I've talked to him about that season this year because I'm trying to grow and learn. How did you handle that? Because this is, I'm in it right now and, and I want to learn. And great discussions in, in what we're talking about. So you lean on each other from past experiences. I can't look that far ahead, right? I have to live for today. I hope we see this through in five years. I'm going, yeah, that, that sucked, but this is a lot of fun now, right? And you have the group that's, that's kind of taking those steps. So, but in our world, as coaching and as players and athletes, you're, you have to live in the moment right now. So this is where we're at, and we got to embrace it, whether we like it or not. You're in it, so we got to do this together. So you you learn from guys that you've been around. You talk to those guys, and I think uh, that's where you get encouragement. That's where I've always been a big uh, believer, and it's whose opinion matters, right? There's a lot of noise and, and a lot of beating the drum, a lot of guys banging, and, and we're we're low hanging fruit. You know, we don't have good analytics. We don't have, we're not scoring goals. We're bad defending. You can, you can kick us when we're down, and we're going to have to take it. But we won't be that way for, for forever. We won't be. I promise you that. So we got to grow in those moments. So it's like, okay, you embrace it. We get it. We got to work through this now. So is growing and embracing it from a coaching staff point of view, is holding them to the standard? You always have to hold yeah. them to the right standard. You must have your non negotiables. Sure. Yeah, and, and you know, everyone's like, well, you got to work hard. That's a requirement. If, if our standard is work hard, it, it, I think we don't really have a standard. So that should be just checked. And, you know, if we're coaching work ethic, we, we've taken a step back. But the competitiveness, that's a different thing. You know, working hard and being real competitive. And, and we do forget there's another team that gets paid on the other side, and they're pretty good at it. They do their pre-scouts. They have a lot of pride, and they have their standard. So when we talk about, what, you know, what has happened in, in consistency. There's, there's nights maybe the other team's pushing hard and, and maybe some of our guys in these roles aren't fully developed for that role. But that's, that's okay and you're gonna have to take those punches but don't stop being competitive. And some practice is important for us. We have to practice well. We have to, you know, if it dips, it's on us as a staff. We've talked to our group about it. That's got to be important to us. You know, we, we don't have three cups under our belt and go, yeah, we need a day off. We got to work. We've tried rest. It didn't work so well. So now we got to push a little bit more. And they've been excellent, you know. So that's, that's where we're at. But that standard, you're right. It has to be upheld. And sometimes the standard doesn't come in the wins and losses, right? But, so, but they have to embrace the work part of it with the competitiveness. It's got to be both, not just we work hard. It's got to be we got to be competitive and we got to be tenacious and we got to be relentless. And... It's not always going to go perfect. You know, we saw the last game there. It wasn't perfect, but we're going to keep beating the drum and get better at it.